what I'm doing is mathematical modeling. Okay? Mathematical model is essentially a toy world where you, you know, have a, a, let's say, a simulated outbreak okay, uh, that you can study in the computer or with mathematical tools, and that lets you predict what happens given the current knowledge about the disease, what is going to happen if we do this or that or not do this. Okay. So the, the most important question here is how prevalent will this be? How many people will experience infection during the outbreak until it's over? And that's the kind of thing we can predict with these mathematical models without actually exposing people to risks. I like to put it as, uh, they study the trees, we make them see the forest. Uh, what's going on here is other s sciences, of course, the biological sciences study the biology. So you have uh, the pathogen, the virus, infects, what happens, how does the virus uh, uh, mess around with the immune system of the host, how does it spread, what's the mechanism, what's the molecular biology of it. Uh, psychology studies how people make decisions based on information, based on media coverage. Okay, That's also something that media studies study. Uh, there are all these little pieces. Geography studies how people move around, how people uh, mingle. Th that's the trees. That's the pieces of the puzzle. We need to know this information. But this information all by itself doesn't answer this question. How many people will get infected if we do this or do that? And, uh, and only after we feed all this information into the mathematical model, if we distill it into a way that can be fed into the mathematical model, will we get answers to this type of question. The most important number in disease modeling is what we call R0. And R0 is actually easy to understand. It's the average number of people that will be infected by an infectious individual. Okay. And that R0 is something that helps us predict how many people ultimately will get infected. Now, uh, for the coronavirus that's right now on our minds, we don't know what it exactly is. There are estimates that range from R0 is equal to 1.4 to uh, 3.9 according to today's information. And this is where the other scientists come in. Psychology, media studies, sociology, biology, they, they, they get us to the place where we can narrow this down. But it makes a big difference. So if we have a, an outbreak with an R0 of 1.5, then that would predict, we would predict that uh, almost 60% of all people would experience infection. That is bleak. If the R0 is like 2, then we would predict about 80% becoming infected eventually. That is even worse. If the R0 is something like 1.1, then we'd, we, we would predict about 17% of the population infected. That is still big. However, if the R0 gets below 1, then we are safe. Then, yes, we will have some infections. Some people will die. That is regrettable. But we will not have this kind of major outbreak where a sizable proportion gets infected. When I say R0, uh, you know, in mathematics, we always need to be very careful what exactly we mean by that number. So the R0 that's being estimated, I understand that this is under assumption that nothing will change. If people change their behavior, if they change their contact pattern, then uh, we can decrease this R0. And hopefully below that threshold of 1, where the outbreak will just peter out. And we were successful with that with the SARS outbreak. So what, is the, what are the changes here? One kind of change is people can wear face masks. 
hand washing, social distancing. Social distancing is important. Uh, avoid crowded situations. Okay. Now that is probably easier in the U.S. than in a, a huge city in China where most people use public transportation, for example. Um, uh, on the other hand side, uh, I in China, we, it seems to be easier to persuade people to adopt control measures, we call them control measures, like wearing face masks. They seem to be uh, pretty eager to do that. People in this country may be more reluctant to adopt. So that's why I'm talking about in terms of control measures. When you observe uh, an outbreak in a different community, the, the natural reaction is to try to isolate your own community from that community. That is a natural reaction and it may be very effective if in fact that outbreak in that other community can be quickly contained, like we had with the SARS outbreak. If they can break their, uh, keep it minor, then that will help us. If they cannot keep it minor, it has zero effect and it may be even harmful. And that's what most people don't realize without mathematical models. If things start happening, if we have that outbreak, if, uh, then that will be at a time when uh, the major panic, the major media attention has passed. So right now, every day I see in the media story front page uh, so many cases of coronavirus and uh, it has to pass a new record. Right now people are panicking about it, although there are you know, an in, in insignificant number of, of uh, situations in the U.S., and they seem to be still contained, and people would be, at this time, with all that media attention, would be willing to adopt control measures, would be willing to pay a low price in terms of changing their behavior to be safe. Now, if that goes on for weeks and months, what will happen? The media will pay less attention to that, people will get used to that, oh yeah, another story about that stuff. Who cares about it? Yeah, nothing has happened yet. And at the time when the outbreak really starts in our community, people may be so blasé, so habituated to it, that they won't treat it seriously anymore. So right now it seems what we need is a sustained attention and a sustained commitment to uh, behavior change. Enable people to Think about risk in a rational way, okay? and that, that, that will help. Charts, visuals <laughs> that really say, here's if, if people, for example, uh, would do more of this, how many cases worldwide would that likely uh, avoid? So the so big message would be familiarize yourself with the government recommendations, what the CDC uh, recommends what uh, you know, university health officials recommend. Follow these recommendations and don't expect that if you do this right now, then in two weeks you can, it will be over. Chances are it won't.